For this problem, we have to study line D and find all of the corresponding Y values for each given X value in our table so we may complete the given table. Let's start off by locating where negative 9 is located on our shown line for the X value and figure out what the corresponding Y value is. We can see that negative 9 is located at this point on our line, so to figure out what the corresponding Y value is, all we have to do is move over to the right and see what that Y value is. And we can see that the Y value is positive 5, so we simply write positive 5 in for the Y value in our table. Next, we have to locate where negative 8 is for the X value on our shown line. And negative 8 is located at this point here. And the corresponding Y value is positive 2. Negative 7 is located at this point on our line. And the corresponding Y value is negative 1. Negative 6 is located at this point on our line. And the corresponding Y value is negative 4. And the last x value that is listed is negative 5, and it is located at this point, and the corresponding y value is negative 7. So now we have completed this table, and we can tell a lot of information just by reading this table. In particular, you may use this table to figure out what your slope is. Slope may be defined as the change in y over the change in x. And if you take a look at our y values, every time you go from one y value to another one, it decreases by 3. From 5 to 2 is a decrease in 3. 2 to negative 1 is also a decrease in 3. From negative 1 to negative 4 is also a decrease of 3. And from negative 4 to negative 7 is also a decrease in 3. When examining the x values, we go from negative 9 to negative 8, which is actually an increase of 1. Negative 8 to negative 7 is an increase of 1. From negative 7 to negative 6 is an increase of 1 as well, as is from negative 6 to negative 5. So to express this relationship, we would say for every change of negative 3 in the y value, x changes by positive 1. So we would say the slope of our line is equal to negative 3 over 1, which may be simplified to negative 3. Because an increase in y is the same for every increase in x, we would say that we have a constant rate of change. And whenever you have a constant rate of change, you have a linear function.